Hi, this is Jessica Jang. I'm the education manager at Workman Arts, and I'm also an artist, and I'm going to provide a micro teach for you today about using food coloring as a watercolor alternative. All right, so what we have here is a square of watercolor paper. We've got some food coloring right here, a bit of salt, water, and a repurposed candy tray I'm using as a paint tray. Um, I usually just drop one or two drops of um, the food coloring into these little um, sections because a little goes a long way as you'll see. So I've taken a wet um, paintbrush and I've just applied it onto my paper so that I can show you just what happens when um, I introduce a little bit of this color to the wet part of the paper. So you can see that just by dabbing the tip of the brush onto these wet parts, you can get this really marvelous effect. Um, the ink tends to spread almost like spores in a petri dish. And I'm just gonna add some red here too so you can see what the effects of this looks like. Oh, we introduce another color and it's important if you want your inks to be highly concentrated in color to just make sure you dip your brush in here give it a good rinse and uh, dab it off with some um, paper towel too so that it can really absorb the um, concentrated uh, food coloring here and I have heard that actually um, food coloring as a painting medium is archival and acid free. I'm not the only artist at all who um, uses this technique. It was introduced to me um, a really long time ago in a um, art uh, studio where we were being really economical with the materials that we had on hand and um, creating lessons around that. But I know that a lot of comic artists um, have used food coloring as a material to paint with and it's really fun. So I've added like a few um, different colors. You can uh, use a wet brush and go in and kind of help blend some areas if you like. You can also of course dilute some of this. So maybe I'll take a little bit of blue, put it here, and add some water and you can see that you can paint with it the lighter touch as well. Yeah. So that's uh, what you can do with the coloring. Uh, you can also add a little bit of salt to um, some of the wetter areas to kind of get an interesting granular effect. Sometimes it, the pigments kind of um, dry and interesting textures around it. And I'll show you some finished pieces to give you a sense of what it looks like once it's dry. So these are just kind of like little um, fun paintings I made, but you can see here that the salt crystals left the sort of effect in the red and the blue areas. And um, same over here with this dark blue area at the bottom and over here in the red. So um, 